one of the most famous dinosaurs of all time is the famous three-horned faced Triceratops. Triceratops is a member of a large group of dinosaurs called Ceratopsians. In turn, the Ceratopsians are members of the large Ornithischian group of dinosaurs called the Marginocephalians, which includes the dome-headed Pachycephalosaurus. Despite the fact that the Ceratopsians didn't really start to become widespread until around the early Cretaceous period, we know of a large number of Ceratopsian dinosaurs. In fact, according to the list of dinosaurs from paleontologist Thomas Holtz's website, which was last updated on January 2012, we know of 69 separate genera of Ceratopsians, spanning from an estimated 161.2 million years ago, all the way to the KT mass extinction that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs about 65 and a half million years ago. The Ceratopsians are one of my favorite groups of dinosaurs, and there are many absolutely fascinating facets of the physiology. But today we're going to be looking at the physical localities of the Ceratopsians, and their transcontinental migration through deep time. Together we will be investigating the questions of where the Ceratopsians first evolved, where in the world they moved in, and when all of this happened. First though, we're going to be looking at the Ceratopsian origins. Conventional paleontological wisdom these days says that the Ceratopsians first evolved in Asia. Let's take a look at this a little bit further. According to the Thomas Holtz list, the three oldest Ceratopsians that we know of, Yinlong, Chaoyangosaurus, and Huan Ceratops, probably just butchered the last two, but whatever, all have been found in China. Collectively, this trifecta of Triceratops relations lived between around 161.2 million years ago and 145.5 million years ago. The fact that all three of these dinosaurs have been solely discovered in China seems like pretty good evidence to confirm the fact that the Ceratopsian dinosaurs evolved in Asia before migrating elsewhere. But let's do a little more investigating. When we factor in other primitive Ceratopsians, a more complete picture begins to form. Another ancient group of Ceratopsians called the Psittacosaurids helps to paint the picture in more certain colors. There are three Psittacosaurids that we know of today. Below is a handy dandy little Psittacosaurid chart. Pretty handy, right? As you can see, the Psittacosaurids seem to have branched out from China, but not terribly far. These extra data points help to paint the picture of As Asiatic origins for Ceratopsians in more factual colors. This whole painting metaphor is actually starting to fall apart, so I'm, I'm just going to scrap it now. To fully get the picture, though, let's take a look at another grouping of Ceratopsians called the Neoceratopsians. In general, the Neoceratopsians are considered to be ancestral with the more derived Ceratopsians, such as Triceratops. After taking a look at the Neoceratopsian section of the Thomas Holtz list, you can see that all but three of the Neoceratopsians were found in Asia, the Middle East, or Europe. Some of these, however, are based on very fragmentary remains. For example, Notoceratops from Argentina is known from a sole jaw fragment that might actually belong to a hadrosaur or duck-billed dinosaur. And Cerandia ceratops from Australia is known only from a forearm bone, which may not even belong to a ceratopsian. However, the third non-Asian Neoceratopsian is most certainly a ceratopsian and is most certainly not from Asia. Meet Zuniceratops, an 11-foot-long dinosaur from the late Cretaceous from between around 93.5 and 89.3 million years ago of New Mexico. Zuniceratops, named for the Native American Zuni tribe, is the earliest, earliest Ceratopsian that we know from North America and is our oldest evidence that the Ceratopsians migrated out of Asia and over to the New World. As you can see, after we factor in the Neoceratopsians in our little map through time thingy, with the addition of the Neoceratopsians, things d definitely seem to make more sense. Now, you might have noticed something different about Zuniceratops in conjunction with the other Ceratopsians that we've looked at so far. Zuniceratops had horns. It seems, after looking at the shape of the data, that the horns that we so typically associate with the Aceratopsians didn't actually evolve in the group until after they had migrated over to North America about 93 million years ago. So now we get to the bigger Aceratopsians, the ones with all the crazy bells and whistles all over their heads. It is also time, actually, to make a very important distinction. So despite the similarity in their names, the words Ceratopsian and Ceratopsid refer to very different groups of animals. The name Ceratopsian refers to the group as a whole, while well, the term Ceratopsid only refers to the generally considered one of the more evolved members of the Ceratopsians. So essentially, a Ceratopsid is always a Ceratopsian, but a Ceratopsian is not always a Ceratopsid. Anyways, so the data from the Thomas Holt list shows a large gap in what we know about the North American Ceratopsian development from between around 89.3 million years ago when Zuniceratops is thought to the end of the range of when Zuniceratops is thought to have lived, and about 83.5 million years ago when the remains of the uh, freaky-looking Diabloceratops have been found. However, it isn't until around 80 million years ago that we have an absolute explosion of Ceratopsid diversity. By my count, 22 of the 30 Ceratopsids that have been discovered so far 
had evolved by eight, 89 years ago. Now, interestingly, of these 22 ceratopsians, 21 of these dinosaurs are thought to have existed from between around 80 million years and 72.8 million years ago. It seems that, given the fossils that we have as of now, this period of time was the heyday for the ceratopsids. Besides Diabloceratops, there are a ton of other fantastic ceratopsids that lived during this time period, and here they are in all of their glory and splendor. First we have Vagaceratops, Utahceratops, Titanoceratops, Pentaceratops, Mojoceratops, Medusaceratops, Cosmoceratops, one of my all-time favorites, Coahuilaceratops, Chasmosaurus, the simply named Ceratops, Anchiceratops, the aptly named Agujaceratops, or Aguyaceratops, I guess, whose name translates to sharp-horned face, Styracosaurus, Spinops, Rubiosaurus, Ineosaurus, Centrosaurus, Avaceratops, Albertoceratops, Rubiosaurus can take care of herself, and Achelosaurus, another favorite, and the dinosaur who made the cover of Scott Sampson's excellent book, Dinosaur Odyssey. To the best of our current knowledge, Ceratopsian diversity continued to flourish until the end of the age of the dinosaurs, although perhaps not quite as diverse as it was from about 80 to 70 million years ago. Nevertheless, some of the most famous Ceratopsians evolved during this time period. Of course, the most famous is the 30-foot-long Triceratops, but there are many others as well, such as Taurosaurus, Tatankaceratops, and I actually believe Tatanka is the, one of a Native American word for buffalo, so, hmm. Oho or Ojoceratops, Eotriceratops, Arhinoceratops, Cynoceratops, and Pachyrhinosaurus, who, despite having first appeared around 80 million years ago, is thought to have survived until about 66.8 million years ago, just a little more than a million years prior to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Now, with the completed map through time thingy, you can see more clearly how Ceratopsians moved geographically through time. I have also now added to the map other groups of Ceratopsians that we kind of skimmed over, such as the Leptoceratopsids, the Bagaceratopsids, and the Protoceratopsids. The success of the Ceratopsid dinosaurs can be quite a surprise. They were one of the last groups of Ornithischian dinosaurs to evolve, with the Ceratopsids only living from between around 80 to 65.5 million years ago, a mere 14.5 million year window. Not only did they have a very limited temporal range, they also appear to have a very limited geographical range as well, as the remains of the Ceratopsians have only been uncovered in North America. Well, I guess for the remains of, except for the remains of Sinoceratops, but, you know. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.